Recently, I bought one of these light bulb controllers. It has a PIR sensor that will detect infrared radiation, and by that detects when somebody enters the room. Then it will activate the flow of current for a light bulb anytime it detects movement. So that will turn on the light for that room. It also has a small potentiometer, so we could set the amount of time that the light will stay turned on, and also with a second potentiometer, the brightness of the light bulb in case of using incandescent light. I thought it should be nice to open this module, see what components it has inside, tell you how it works and how to build a homemade prototype of this circuit using separated components. But this kind of module works with high voltage, here is paying 220 volts AC, and that could injure you, so make sure you use proper tools, never touch the circuit while the main AC input is connected, or just build the same setup but with low DC voltage, for tests, for example 12 volts. Ok, so before we start, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. And also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So, let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB that offers the most economic prices for PCB services right now with only $2 for 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 cm. The finish of their PCB is very professional and high quality. So just upload the Gerber files to glcpcb.com, select the thickness, the size, the quantity and so on, and place your order for amazing prices. What's up my friends, welcome back. Here I have a small PIR sensor. I first want to tell you how this works. Living body radiate heat in the form of infrared radiation. This small module is a passive module and it gives voltage when infrared radiation is detected. But it only detects changes in the radiation value. If the room is empty and a human enters, it will detect that the heat infrared radiation increased. But after a while, if the person won't move, it will turn off its output. But once again, if the person exits the room or moves around, it will detect changes in the radiation values and turn on its output once again. That's why it detects movement. A still person won't trigger this sensor. Ok, so this is the commercial light bulb controller with infrared sensor. This kind of module must have three main parts. First, it needs a voltage regulator, since the light bulb works at 220 volts AC, and the digital part, the sensor, and everything else will probably work at 5 or 12 volts DC low voltage. The other part must be the detection part made by the sensor, a delayed circuit and probably a microcontroller or a specially designed IC. Finally, the last part is the high voltage control of the power that will control the voltage applied to the light bulb. Ok, so how we can achieve all these parts? Let's first open this commercial module and see what we have inside. I take out 3 screws and carefully open the plastic case. We can see the 220 volts main input with this red and white wire and a big high voltage capacitor. I can see an optocoupler here, and also an IC that I'm guessing that will control everything. And yes, I found it on the internet and it is the BISS0001 IC, and this is the schematic for this chip that I found, in case that you want it. Below this plastic cap is the infrared sensor and an LDR to compensate the light amount. So this part must give the signal to that integrated chip, and the chip will control the optocoupler and that will control this. Ok, so now this is a triac, and we have already seen how to control a triac with a firing signal in a past tutorial, so make sure you watch that video for more details on triac control. Ok, so we can also see those two potentiometers to control the light and the time that the light will be on. So now we know more or less the parts for sensing the movement and control the output power. Quite strange, but it seems that this chip can take directly 220 volts and there is no regulating circuit for 5 or 12 volts. There is only this diode between 220 volts high AC voltage input and the VCC pin of the chip. But then I have this other PIR module that has the same chip, but it seems that maybe this is a different version, because this one can work with only 12 volts. If you know more about this matter, please leave a comment below. Ok, so we should make our own circuit, right? I have a few ideas for this. One is the so called analog solution, and the other one is the digital solution. 
The analog part is pretty straightforward, and it goes like this. If I connect the PIR sensor to ground, 5 volts, and connect my multimeter to the output, we will see that each time that the infrared radiation changes, we will have 3.2 volts at the output. So we could connect this output to a transistor that will control a relay and that will turn the light on and off. But as we have seen, the 3.2 volts value will only last for a few seconds. So we need a delay circuit, so the light will stay turned on for more time. This is the schematic that I've made for this solution. Using a big capacitor and a potentiometer, we can change the time it takes the capacitor to discharge. The higher is the potentiometer value, more time it will take the capacitor to discharge, so more time we will have the light turn on. As we can see on the oscilloscope, after the sensor pulse, which is the green line, the capacitor charges up very fast, and then slowly discharges, and that creates a delay. Ok, so I mount this schematic on a prototyping breadboard. To get 12 volts DC, I use this very small module with a transformer. It is very small, banana for scale. Be careful working with high voltages. Only connect the main input when you are sure and never touch the exposed circuit. Or just download from below the 12V schematic that will do the same as this one but for a 12V light bulb or LED in order to learn how it works. Ok, so I have my module that gives me 12V DC from 220V AC. That supplies the infrared sensor, the delay circuit and the relay. Then the light bulb is connected to the relay output. With this potentiometer, I can set the delay for the light to be turned on. Ok, so now I have my oscilloscope connected to the main 220V output with the yellow line, the infrared sensor output with the green line, and the delay circuit with the blue one. If I'm not moving, all the outputs are low. But when I move my hand, the infrared sensor, the green line, will turn on for a few seconds. That will charge up the delay circuit which is the blue line and the relay will allow the high voltage to pass, as we can see with the yellow line. But if I stay still, after a while, the blue line will fully discharge and the yellow line is low once again. Adjusting the potentiometer, we would see that the discharging process is getting faster or slower. So I test this one more time, but this time with the light bulb connected. I pass my hand in front of the sensor. I activate the light. The capacitor is discharging and after a while the light turns off. Ok guys, so what about the digital solution? Well, that involves an IC. We could mount the same schematic as this commercial module, or just use a microcontroller and create our own circuit. In this way, we can control the delay using a timer counter inside of the microcontroller. We could use an Arduino Nano, and if the code works, we could then pass it to an 80Tiny85 since that chip is way smaller and we only need a few pins. Ok, but even for this digital solution, there are two options. Using a relay as before to control the main 220V AC output, or use a triac as the commercial circuit. Ok, so using the relay is very simple since all the microcontroller has to do is to turn the relay on and off with a 12V pulse. But if we use the triac, we have to synchronize the firing pulse, as you remember from the triac tutorial. So we have to read the main input as well and detect the zero cross. But in this way we could control the brightness of the light bulb in case of using an incandescent light. Ok, so first let's see the relay based schematic. Ok, I mount everything on a breadboard with the Arduino Nano. If I detect over 3.2V with the infrared sensor, then I activate the relay with a BJT transistor connected to digital pin D3. I also read the analog input on A1, which is connected to a potentiometer and I map the delay from 5 seconds to 60 seconds. Change these values in the code if you want. Ok, so I upload the code and I test it. And yes, it works great, as the other circuit. See my video on how to upload codes to an 80 tiny chip and use the schematic below for that in case you don't want to use an Arduino Nano because it is too big for this job. Ok, if you still think that using a relay makes the PCB of this project too big, even that we have some small relays as well on the market, well, now this is the schematic for the digital solution but using a triac control. I've mounted everything on the breadboard. This is a little bit more complicated. 
I'm using this optocoupler to separate the high AC voltage from the low DC voltage. We need to rectify the input as well, using this diode. So we could read the zero cross and synchronize the firing poles with that zero cross. I will use the Mach 3220 opto insulator, the PC817 photocoupler and the BTA16 triac, as in the past triac tutorial. I'm still using the small transformer to get my 12 volts. Okay, so now I power up the circuit with 220 volts as before, and now I move around and the light bulb will turn on. I can set the delay with one potentiometer from 5 seconds up to 60 seconds, and we could change these values in the code. But now, with this second potentiometer, I can set the brightness of the light bulb as well by controlling the firing angle to the triac. Ok, so this circuit is a bit bigger, but if we were to make a PCB with it, it wouldn't be much bigger than this commercial one, especially if using an 80 tiny chip. This kind of control will work with only those old incandescent light. It won't work with neon lights or LED types. Ok, so that's pretty much for this tutorial. Now we know how a PIR sensor works, how to detect movement and activate stuff, in my case a light bulb, but it would control any other thing such as an alarm, maybe a heater or a fan, or any other gadget. You could connect the relay to a radio, so the music would turn on each time that you enter the room. Feel free to try any other option and consider helping my projects on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me, and will keep these kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.